Praise the Lord. We could all stand in the house this morning. Good to have each and every one of you in the house of the Lord. I know there's a lot of sickness going on, a lot of things happening. I know you could have went to bed mad last night. But I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. Every single morning they're new. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore I will hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him and my soul that seeketh him. Brother David, I come to this place today to seek for him, to worship him and to magnify him. If you come in the house this morning to praise the King of kings and Lord of lords, just let it be made known. Let's clap our hands and magnify the Lord and praise him because his mercies are new every day. Every day that I wake up, he's a new God. I can praise him and I can magnify him and I can bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord all my soul. Bless the Lord all my soul. Open your mouth and praise the Lord in this place this morning. Another one. 
take up the offering at this time and Heidi would put the ways to give. We have Giveify. We have PayPal. You can uh, send cash or check. Melton River Bend Pentecostal P.O. Box 477 New Madrid, Missouri 63869 We are going to take up offering after we say the prayer request. The wooden pans are for the offering. The golden pans are for the tithes and the Sister Heidi would put the prayer up. If you'll repeat after me. This prayer works folks. We say it time and time again but it does. It really works upon the authority of your word. I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off and debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name, come and bring your offering. Thank you.
What a rich presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, what a unity in this place this morning, amen. I was reading this week in the 1920s. There was many babies in the U.S. They, they were dying in the hospital and they increased the physical touch in the hospitals. They, they increased, they came together. Mort mortality rate instantly went down. Something happens when we get together in the house of the Lord. Something happens when we gather together. Call upon the name of the Lord. That's what they were doing in the song. May the Lord bless thee. They were calling on the name of the Lord. We got much to take to the Lord this morning. I don't want to talk too much. I feel the Spirit leading me directly into prayer this morning. But I want you to pray with me. Pray with me. I'm believing for something this morning. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I believe things are... Turn around. Amen. Lord, I love you. Thank you. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I feel you right now. You're in this place, Lord. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, whatever the situation is, Lord, I know that you can meet it. There's nothing too hard for you, God. But Lord, I pray that we can get a revelation that you love us and that you want to see us do good. You want to see us be who you've called us to be. Lord, there's no failure too big, Lord. There's nothing that can hold us back, Lord. I pray that we get a revelation that you love us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Lord, you love us. But Lord, teach us to love unconditionally. Lord, I pray that we love the ones around us. Lord, I'm tired of seeing our country fall apart. I'm tired of seeing people joke about our president lord we got to support him and i'm praying that he begins to make decisions that are in your perfect will lord i'm praying that in the name of jesus racism is gone lord i'm tired i'm tired of seeing hate i want to see love in this country lord and i'm praying that in the name of jesus lord the ones who are affected by covid right now they are healed I pray against any long-lasting effects, Lord. I pray for the ones who are struggling to breathe. I pray that their lungs are open, Lord. I pray, Lord, that the blood cells that it's working against them, Lord. I pray that they work properly. The pains in the joints, Lord, I pray for all pain to be gone. And, Lord, I pray that we don't see another case in the river bend. I pray that we don't see another case in southeast Missouri. Lord, I'm asking for healing to sweep through, Lord. We need you, God. And I'm praying over our children. I'm praying over the young ones, Lord. I pray against that prayer. Pressure, that pressure to be somebody, that pressure to be famous, Lord. I pray that they can feel free to align with your word and be who you've called them to be, God. I'm just praying for liberty to rise up in this place. I'm praying for unity to rise up in this place, Lord. I pray that we love one another. Lord Jesus, we need you, God. It's in Jesus' name. I've lived stories that have proved your faithfulness. I've seen miracles my mind can't comprehend. And there's beauty in what I can't understand. Jesus, it's you. Jesus, it's you.
this morning before service, I walked these floors a little while praying, and I felt the miracle signs and wonders from the heart of God to be loosed in this place today. Healing and deliverance, chains broke. Here's what I see when the angel came to the prison for the express purpose of setting Peter free. The Bible said Peter was asleep between four quaternions of soldiers. You think the devil ain't afraid of the gospel when they got to put 16 guards on one preacher? the angel of the Lord moved in among them and reached down and smote Peter on the side to wake him up and the Bible said when he stood up the chains fell off of him I really really feel like There's some people in this room right now and some watching us online right now that the angels already smote you in the side and woke you up. But it's time to get up. And when you stand up, and I'm not talking necessarily physically, you understand, but when you stand up, you got no reason to stay beat down. You got used to that because the enemy beating you and flogging you and life just weighed in heavy on you. But if you shake yourself and realize that the hand of the Lord is on my life and you stand to your feet and those chains are going to fall off. I'm talking about the chains of addiction, the chains of depression, the chains of oppression, the chains of generational curses. I'm talking about the chains of a bad reputation. I'm talking about the chains of bad decisions will fall off of you. That's all Peter had to do was get up. The chains fell off. The angel then said, Brother Jerry, he said, follow me. Brother David, that not one cotton-picking soldier even knew anything was happening. I want to let you know the Lord's going to work in your life in a realm that the devil can't even enter in it. The devil won't even know it's happening. The devil can't even comprehend your, your problems and circumstances. Uh, they won't even be aware. They're just gone. And if I read it right, Brother Shannon, the doors just started opening in front of them. Brother Blake, it's, that spirit's here. And listen, when Peter showed up at the prayer meeting, he knocked on the door. A little girl named Rhoda came, looked through the peephole, said, who is it? He said, it's Peter. She said, it can't be. Peter's in jail. She run back and told the church, Peter's been set free. <laughs> they said, you better get back to praying. It was a ghost. But the Lord was working, Brother David. The Lord was working. Is there anybody in the house that would like that to be you? That would just like that to be you? Do you have enough faith to say, here I am, Lord. I'm ready to get up today. And when you stand, those chains are going to fall off of you. Acts the 19th chapter. Thank you for coming today. We have several guests that are here. We're so grateful that you're here. Um, we do know that COVID has reared its head again, but I, I don't think it ever put its head down. But uh, uh, the Lord's in control. Amen. Don't kid yourself. The Lord's in control. He's not surprised. But I thank you for coming today. To everyone watching us online and those that are going to watch us after a while on the slick, There's a whole group of people know they can watch us in the afternoon and it don't show up on the deal. <laughs> hey, hey I, I'm, I come with a, a hope this morning. Uh, we've, we've went over a thousand views the last four services, I think, four Sundays. 
We were up in 500 range Wednesday night, Brother David, if I'm not mistaken. That's a lot of folks watching our service, and it ain't all y'all getting on there and clicking it and making the numbers go up. I learned something. Over 600 people from one church have been baptized in Jesus' name, all of them online. They reached out and contacted somebody, and they they connect them with somebody, baptize them in bathtubs and swimming pools and other church baptistries. Let me tell you something else. There's something going to happen today. Somebody's going to out there because we got two churches, the one that's here and the one that is online with us. We got them in Tennessee. We got them in Arizona. We got one lady watches us in Arizona. She's more faithful than most of y'all. But God, the river bend is going to plant churches all over the world because people are going to watch us online and they're going to believe that everything God says about them is true. And they're going to start witnessing and ministering to people. Every time I start talking crazy, about half of you plug your ears and say, there goes the big dummy again. But I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I found out how we're going to plant churches all over southeast Missouri is we're going to build, we're going to, we're going to plant recovery groups all through the boot hill. Yep, yep. There's a reason why you got your head down and you ain't looking at me right now. It's because you know God has done called you to step into ministry and you're scared what it's going to do to your schedule. Let me tell you something right now, baby. You better throw your calendar in the trash or better yet, tear it up and flush it down the commode because God is fixing to wait off into your life and he's going to start doing things with you that you only dreamed about, that you thought was for somebody else. God is going to start using you to change this world. He's getting the church ready for the trumpet to sound. Oh, I preached it to you. Did y'all watch the service? Uh, he said, uh, how many times did somebody say, I'm going to bring the former and the latter rain together. I'm going to give you back the years the palmer worm and the caterpillar ate. Uh, the Lord is working. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You're not better because you came in here today. We're better because you did. We're better. We've been waiting on you. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to. I'm going to do this. I ain't going to. My wife said, oh, no. She knows I can't play this thing. But Branston and Caitlin only been coming with us about a month. The church about a month. They got COVID today. Can't be there. He texted me this morning. Said, uh, y'all going to be movie stars on my TV this morning. I can't come to church. But he sent me a text message last week. And he said, after I've been solid living for God for a long time, I'm coming for that six string job I saw up there. Well, Branston, I hope you're watching today. You're going to be solid, but it ain't going to be near as long as you think. Huh? He said, he said, I served the devil for 25 years playing in bands. He's a songwriter and a guitar picker. And I said, let me tell you something. That guitar's been sitting there waiting on you. Huh? That's the way we think around these parts now. Huh? That's the way we think. I feel Jesus moving up in here right now. Somebody's saying, you know what? I might have a place here. Somebody's saying, you know what? God might can use me here. Somebody's saying, I might be able to do what I'm supposed to do. Somebody lift up some high praise to the Lord. I'm going to print me off a paper and I'm going to hang it around that guitar that says Branston's. 
But let me tell you something. I don't care if we fill up the whole cotton picking platform. I can turn. I've done it before. I bring the whole congregation on the platform, and we won't have nothing but a choir, musicians, and praise singers singing to an empty congregation, and then we'll fill it up again. I've done it before. I'll do it again. Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't you tell me he can't do it. And it came to pass. In case y'all was wondering, I miss being here. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, let me tell you who Apollos was. He was a preacher of another denomination who Priscilla and Aquila, some church folks, took him unto them and expounded the word of God to him more perfectly. I know this is against the Pentecostal rules, but it's just the way Jesus works. And that rascal went to work evangelizing the truth immediately. As a matter of fact, Sister Maria, the Bible said they left him there. They took off and left him there. That's what the Holy Ghost can do. I know it's going to hurt your feelings, but there's going to be some folks show up and going to pass you up because they're going to say, I believe God can use me. We put the probation office out of business here at the River Bend. We ain't put nobody on probation no more. You ready? We ready for you. I could just say, let's go home now. <laughs> and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? I'm going to preach on a subject I feel like the Lord gave me called now or later. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Now or later? Paul was, when he asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He was really saying, I've got to know something. Are we going to celebrate together now or later? Now or later? It's going to come down to the place that everybody you meet is going to be now or later according to your faith. Lord, help us preach. I pray you anoint us. Your word is powerful. It's beautiful. There's an incredible spirit in here. I pray, God, that you set upon us with a mighty holy anointing. And I pray that they have faith to stand. And those chains fall off. I see addiction being broke today. I see depression being broke today. I, I see the spirit of the loser being broke today. They're not losers, they're winners. They're the head and not the tail, from above and not beneath, the apple of your eye. Let that, let that revelation flow into this house today. Let it flow down the internet waves today. It's going to happen. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Again, God bless you for coming and for standing for the reading of the word. The word says, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, Acts chapter 2 and verse 39. The apostle Paul considered himself the vessel or the mouthpiece whereby the Lord would call everyone. We need to ask ourselves this morning, if as many as the Lord our God shall call is determined by how many he calls through me, how many will be called? I, I got to say that one more time. I don't think you heard me. He said, as many as the Lord our God shall call. If you're the voice whereby the Lord calls many, how many will be called? I'm going to say it one more time. We got in our head somehow 
And don't you misunderstand me. The Lord's working on people you don't even know. But the ones you do know, he's counting on you to be his voice into their life. The apostle Paul, brother Larry, took it on himself that everywhere he went, everywhere he was, in jail or on the street, everybody he met, it was his responsibility to tell them about Jesus and to tell them what the gospel was, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Such was Paul's faith that he simply believed the word that the Bible says in the last days saith God I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And Paul thought all means all. We keep talking about what the Lord's going to do in this last day. I would submit to you that that's not what the Lord's thinking about. He knows what he's going to do in the last day. What he's wondering is how many of us are going to let him do it through us. How many of us are going to join in as laborers together with him and realize that God has called us to the kingdom for such a time as this. And that's not a question. I want you to know there are people that are listening to me in the room and people listening to me on the internet. I want you to know that God's not calling you just so he can save you. God's calling you because through you he wants to save the world. He wants to put you to work. He wants to use you. He wants to bless you. I know everybody's not talented. I know everybody's not blessed with great anointing and ability to preach. But everybody, everybody who hears my voice right now, you are in position to be used by God. Oh, I'm going to preach a minute right now. I don't care what the world says you fall short in. I don't care what the world reminds you about that you've messed up. I want you to know the Bible says in a great house are vessels of honor and of dishonor. And the Bible says that you can make yourself a vessel fit for the master's use. You simply have got to present yourself to him. Don't you think for one minute I preach some kind of easy faith. But if you just believe, it is easy. But with that belief, Brother David, comes a responsibility. I'm going to align myself with God for me to win the world. Paul believed that when the Lord said, I'll pour my spirit out upon all flesh, he meant all flesh. So with this question, Paul is asking them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? I want to know who you are, and I want to know where you're standing. Will we celebrate now or later? Because if you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we're going to celebrate. Not just the fact that you've received the Holy Ghost, but that by receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are positioning yourself to be a tool used by heaven. Don't nobody believe that but the new worshipers. We got folks think I've been hanging around here for years and I've heard this and I've heard that. Let me tell you something. You go win a soul and then tell me what you're thinking. You go win a soul and then tell me how you feel. You go teach a Bible study and see if it doesn't give you a shot of life and a shot of hope. You know why we're discouraged? You know why we're bored? You know why our love is growing cold? It's because we're not active in the kingdom of God. But this is not the acts of the apostles. This is the acts of the River Bend Pentecostals. And we are living out the the scriptures. If you've received the Holy Ghost, let's celebrate now. And if you haven't yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, give me just a minute and we'll celebrate later because I'm going to tell you what you got to do to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and it's for everybody. Please be seated. You know, I heard this the other day. I heard this the other day from Brother Jeff Arnold and he's, he's way on up there in years, but that's still a preaching machine. 
And you know, he said that the book of Second Peter that says uh, um, that God's not willing that any should perish, but all that would come to repentance. You know what he said, Brother Ronnie? I can't believe I missed it as much as I preach this. He said that was not written to sinners. It's true. It was written to the church. You want to know why? Because it's the church that has a problem believing that God wants to save everybody. Oh, you don't think for one second that we don't put limits on what God can do? When the Lord calls you to do something, tells you to go pray for somebody, we'll run it by the filter of how it's going to affect me before I'll do it. That's what I'm talking about. Ain't nobody shouting. But we're about to. Because someday there's going to get the revelation, the realization in us that we are just dumb enough to believe that God can use us to change somebody else's life. That you can be the vessel whereby God will flow through and change somebody else's world. Hear me right now. I'm giving you authority as your pastor. You run into somebody this week that don't feel good, got a belly ache, got an infected nose hair, got an ingrown toenail, got a backache, got a headache, got COVID. Don't you be afraid. Lay hands on them. And in the name of Jesus Christ, command them to be healed. Brother Parkey asked me how much I had to pay y'all to send over here and do this. I told him I didn't pay them nothing. They decided to do it. You got to believe this. So what if it don't work? What if he don't heal them? Okay. Guarantee you he wasn't going to heal them if you didn't pray for him. The only, maybe the only thing changed is you put a seed of faith in them that they said somebody cares about me. We're going to celebrate now or later. The gospel, Paul powerfully and very clearly delivered the gospel everywhere he preached. He shared it with us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. He says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. And we know, as I said this morning from the book of Galatians chapter number 1, that it's the only gospel. It's not a gospel. It's not one of many, but it's the only gospel. And if you come preaching any other gospel than that which you've heard from the beginning, let him be accursed. He said, even if an angel comes down telling you something different, don't believe it. It's that exclusive. He said, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand. Which also you have received, and wherein you stand. He's wanting to know where these disciples stand. Oh, hear me right now. That's exactly, that's the song I need playing right now. Because that's what I'm doing. That's how I feel. It's just that real. It's just that true. You got to get out of bed every morning and square your shoulders back and say, I might have messed up yesterday, but I'm getting in a place where God can use me today because I'm going to come in contact with somebody that he loves too much to let them pass me by. He said, you received it and you stand in it. Ladies and gentlemen, you get filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's not the end. It's just the beginning. And the book of 1 Peter chapter number 1 says to you which are kept by the power of God. He fills me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and he keeps me by the power of the Holy Ghost. He saved me by his amazing grace and Miss Janie keeps me by teaching me through his amazing grace. They sang it earlier. I want you to know it. God is for you. He's on your side. He wants you to win. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be used. And we have to believe everybody we meet the same way. He 
said, by which also ye are saved. Now that in the literal translation says, by which also ye are being saved. Because we ain't made it yet. But if we stay in the spirit, we will. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. All Paul did was start preaching the message that he preached. That was preached to him. How that Christ died for our sins. Everybody say Christ died. died. According to the scriptures. And that he was buried. Everybody say was was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Everybody say he rose again. Ladies and gentlemen, the gospel is Christ died, was buried, and rose again. That's the gospel. I want to minister just a little bit. I'd like for us to completely eradicate a perception of the world that says, you Pentecostals think you're the only ones going to be saved. Now, before you get nervous and say, oh, he's going to let down on what he preaches, that's not true. That's not true. First thing is, all of us ain't making it. Okay. But we do not need to be perceived as thinking we're better than anybody. But for the grace of God, there goes me. I was messed up, goofed up, tore up from the floor up, but God stepped in and saved me. I don't deserve this. This is not because I'm worthy of this. This is not because i am I'm got any kind of ability. This is just because of the grace of God. And I can't forget that. He says, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Now, I want us to read it a different way. Since you believed, have you received the Holy Ghost? Here's what I want to point out to you. Paul does not demean or belittle what experience and belief system they already have. I read this from, this is not original to me, but I read it from Brother Tenney, and he was sharp as a tack. He said, we've got to stop looking at the religious world like they're wrong and start looking at them like they really are incomplete. Oh, buddy. Because if somebody starts praying and calling on the name of Jesus and seeking after him, I can't tell them you're wrong. But I can tell them there's more. There's more. I think Miss Jane told me this morning, she preached a little bit to me before I got up here, and she said it's like we putting together a puzzle that we didn't have all the pieces to, but the pieces keep coming, and the pieces keep coming until we put it all together and we realize that this is... Ah, this is where I was going all along. This is what I wanted all along. This is what my soul longed for all along. I wanted somewhere to fit in. I wanted somewhere to belong. I wanted somewhere where I could be changed into what God wanted me to be. You know, the world is is sick and tired of religion that doesn't change them. He simply begins where they are. He asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? He'll use what they already have as a foundation. It's important to note that the Holy Ghost is a gift to be received, received by faith. It always was a gift. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to work for it. And let me tell you this. I know this goes against our traditional Pentecostal theology. You don't have to beg for it either. And seeking for the Holy Ghost is not biblical. You know why we don't worship and shout about that? It's because we did like me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We shook them and we scratched on them and we pushed them and we shoved them and we wallered them all around because for some reason we felt, I remember praying with Brother James Bunch and I felt like that one of these times I'm just going to slap him as hard as I can and scare him into getting the Holy Ghost. 
Now that was just a joke, but we have a mentality that says you got to work for it. That's not the book. That's not the book. You receive it by faith. But you can't get the Holy Ghost without repenting. And that's surrendering to the Lord your entire will, your entire life, all your desires and wants, everything I surrender to you. It's way more than just saying I'm sorry. In response to Paul's question, they said, I'm going to educate you right now. They said, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Ghost. Now that sounds like they didn't know of any such thing, but that's not true because they were disciples of John the Baptist and John the Baptist preached that the Holy Ghost was coming. Here's what they hadn't heard. The Holy Ghost, we have not yet heard that the Holy Ghost is available. That's exactly. We didn't know that it was available for whoever desired it. We didn't know that it had been poured out upon all flesh like the Bible says. Well, when Paul found out they had not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, because that's the way they got it in the book of Acts, and I'm happy to tell you we're still getting it that way. Oh, you better well, you might as well clap. Because I'm telling you right now, it's the truth. It's the evidence you've received the Holy Ghost. It is not the Holy Ghost. One of the reasons why I sought the Holy Ghost for so long is I really thought the Lord was going to fly out of heaven and slap me in the mouth and make me talk in tongues just like an out-of-body experience. It doesn't work like that. What happens is, is he starts in the bottom of my feet and he fills me up with his spirit and when he gets to my tongue, Brother Ronnie, I've got the option to begin to speak what the Spirit tells me to speak. I remember I told that to somebody one time, Brother Tripp, that had been seeking for the Holy Ghost for a long time. I said, let me tell you something. If you say, Brother David, I want you to stand up right now, that comes into my mind. I think it and then I say it. I said, what happens is, is the Lord puts those words in your mind. You don't know what they mean. You don't know what they say. And you've got to overcome your fear to speak them out. You know what that rascal told me, Brother Larry? He said, well, my goodness, that's been happening to me for weeks, but I wouldn't say it got the Holy Ghost that day, all right? Let me tell you something. It ain't that hard when you realize you're receiving it. Brother Richard, we can't shout at the simplicity of the gospel. We better not shout at anything. Paul then takes the next logical step. And in verse number three, he said unto them, unto, everybody say unto. unto. We just skip right over that word, and I found out today it's powerful. It's powerful. Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. Everybody say unto. unto. I looked it up. I thought there's got to be something about that word. I'm going to come to a close real quick. I can hear the natives are restless. <laughs> unto, I thought, that really kind of doesn't make sense. It ought to say into, but it says unto, and it means unto. He said unto them, hear me tell you what he's saying. See if you catch this. Sister Maria, it's the coolest thing ever. Look here. He said unto them, how far did you get when you were baptized? That's what unto means. Woo! I looked it up. The point reached or entered. How far did you get? They said... Unto John's baptism is how far we got. Say, what does that have to do with anything? I hope that you would ask. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. 
saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. They told him, we got as, oh, Lord, help me. They told him, we got as far as repentance. And you know what Paul said? That's all I needed to know. I wanted to know where you were. I needed to know where you stood because we was going to either celebrate now or later. We're either going to get together arm in arm now or just give me a few minutes and I'm going to have you prayed through. Look at here. Verse number five. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, they were disciples. They were believers who had started on a journey. And they went as far as they knew. And Paul took it upon himself to take them all the way home. That's why we talked about it this morning. Truth is confrontational because it's exclusive. Paul said, I just need to know where you stood at. They told him, we repented of our sins. We made some changes and we followed John. But we didn't know that the after had come yet. Now when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. They were ready. They now knew where they stood. They stood at repentance, but they needed yet to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Brother Richard, if it doesn't matter how you're baptized, then John's baptism would have been good enough. I can't tell you how many... I can't tell you how many people lately I've asked them, how were you baptized? And they told me, I don't know. Because you see, most places, it ain't a big deal. But let me tell you something, when you get saved like the Bible says, uh, it's a big deal. (laughs) Because I'm not just doing it for your benefit, and I'm not just doing it to follow somebody's rules and regulations, uh, but I'm taking on a name uh, that's above every name. Uh, It's the name of Jesus that makes demons tremble. It's the name of Jesus that makes disease flee. And it's the name of Jesus that establishes me as a child in the family of God. In effect, I get my name wrote in his family Bible when I'm baptized in his name. If it didn't make a difference, they wouldn't have rebaptized him in Jesus' name. Verse number six, and when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Now let me tell you something right now. Many people try to explain away the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Acts 2, speaking in tongues, because they had to speak the languages of all the people that was present. And then Acts chapter number 10, Cornelius' house speaking in tongues because they had to be a witness to all the different people that were there, the different nationalities. But in Acts chapter 19, they all 12 from the same place. But Brother Robbie, they still begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. This is one of the most profound examples of speaking in tongues as the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost because nobody was there but the Apostle Paul and 12 people that needed the Holy Ghost. I want you to hear me now, those that are in here and especially those that are online. If you're watching us online and you've heard the word and you realize there's more and the reason why that you're watching what we're preaching is because you haven't been happy where you are. I want you to know you can be baptized in the name of Jesus. I want you to know you can reach out to us, send a message to us, and I'll find somebody near about where you live to baptize you. And if we can't, we'll come there ourselves. I've been needing a vacation anyway. 
I want you to know that wherever you are right now, if you believe with all of your heart, after you've repented of your sins, you can't get the Holy Ghost till you die. You've done good. You've been faithful where you are. But you're here. You're watching and listening. Why? Because you're hungry. You know there's more. You read it in the Bible. You see, these 12 disciples had heard John preach. There's coming one after me who's mightier than I. I'm not worthy to stoop down and unlatch his shoes. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. But Paul asked him about it. He said, we ain't heard about that yet. But we read about it. We didn't know it was for us. You've read it in the Bible. You've watched as others have experienced it. I just have one question. Are we going to celebrate now or later? Over 600 people baptized in FaceTime. People establishing churches in other towns by opening recovery ministry there. I believe with all of my heart that the River Bend is going to have its footprint in Matthews, Conran, Canalu, Risco, Parma, Kiwani, LaForge. And he's going to use you to do it. I believe he's going to have that we're going to have our footprints in Arizona and Tennessee and Illinois and Kentucky and Indiana and all the Midwest. I'm telling you what I'm preaching eliminates the days of somebody having to pray, Lord, send us somebody. Lord, send us somebody. I come to tell you today, you might be that somebody. If you just believe and allow God to fill you with his spirit. And the book says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Stand with me on your feet right now. The Ethiopian eunuch, he's reading the Bible and he sees himself in there. I'm going to preach that before long. He sees himself in there, Brother David. He sees him talk about a man don't have, can't have offspring. He ain't married. He don't have no children. He said, the Lord said, Philip, go down there. You think you don't matter? You think the enemy has told you you don't matter? You live all alone? You can't get out and come to the house? Can't get out and come to the house of God. Philip was in the middle of a red hot revival in Samaria. New people are getting the Holy Ghost. They're laying hands on them and pow, they're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord said, leave there and come go where I want you. The best he could hope for was one soul, Brother Larry. But I want you to know one soul is that important in the kingdom of God. Yes. Philip saw him reading the Bible. He showed up when he was reading the Bible. He said, do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch said, how can I except some man show me? Now, Philip didn't say this, but he could have. I'm the man. No, you, you ain't got to get all cocky and arrogant, but we do need to be bold and realize, you know what? I was lost until the Lord turned my car around one Wednesday night one year ago, Brother Ronnie. It feels like 50 years, and that's a good thing. I can't remember. Miss Jane, I begin to think this week about how we, we preached a message called Go After It about the Ark of the Covenant. And Miss Jane told me that for 10 years she'd been writing something in her journal about manna that was hidden somewhere and she didn't know what it meant. And the Lord called told me get a message for Jane Peppercorn and he said, I want you to talk about the manna in the ark. She said, 10 years, I've been wanting to know what that was. And she came for four services, and she's going to be here for 4,000 services. That's not a coincidence. You're that important. We don't want you full of the Holy Ghost so we can pad these pews with more folks. We want you full of the Holy Ghost so you can go out and do the work of the Lord. 
every last one of these fellas, there would be nothing greater. I want to keep them here. I love having them here. They're anointed. But the kingdom of God is way bigger than this. I like nothing better than to lose all five of them because they're planting a church somewhere. Oh, y'all better clap. You think the Lord can't raise us up another crop? You think the Lord, we're going to have to make room for what the Lord is doing. I'm telling you right now, I know it ain't happened yet, but it's going to. I can't buy, I can't buy exploring God's word fast enough. I keep giving them away every time I buy them. I done give away about eight or nine now. People are scheduling home Bible studies. They're doing the work of the Lord. They're getting out into people's houses and inviting people to come to their houses because, Brother Terrence, we believe we can. Because all I got to tell them is what he's done for me. Now or later. Either way, you're coming. Brother Shannon, we're going to get to the place where we're surprised when they don't come. We're not going to be like, well, I didn't think they would anyway. We got to get, that's a damnable attitude. It's got to be gone. We got to believe that everybody we talk to, matter of fact, Sister Maria, we got to stop thinking, no, I'm going to talk to them a little bit now. I'm going to talk to them a little bit later. If I can find where they stand right now, according to the book, I can have them full of the Holy Ghost before we walk to the next block. Ooh, that's kind of scary. Does that scare you a little bit? It does me. I hope I got what it takes when the time comes. Uh, but Sister Dana, you know what? I'm getting stronger. I'm getting stronger. And I'm decreasing, Brother David. Uh, and I'm realizing less of me uh, and more of him. I must decrease. Uh, and when I decrease, he automatically increases. So what's it going to be? People are watching us online. I want you to know. Whether you're watching us live or whether you're watching us later, this word's for you. Amen. The Holy Ghost is for you. If you're here and you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, you're one prayer of repentance away from receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You're that close. You're one death away. Die to your flesh. Lord, forgive me of everything I've ever done. Change my way of thinking. Change my want to. Change my habits. Lord, I'm just surrendering all of me to you. I didn't do it right. I didn't live it right. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet, Lord, change all of me. I'm in, I'm in your service. So we're just going to go home or what? So do we have enough faith? Do we have enough faith to say if you step out of your pew and you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you step out of your pew. Matter of fact, you don't have to step nowhere. Because I like them. I think it's important. But altar call ain't in the Bible either. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them that heard the word. Do you believe it? Why don't everybody in this house right now just lift your hands up? Let's all repent together. Come on, let's all repent. In the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, Lord, I come to you as a dead man. I come to you, Lord, dying out to everything. I come to you, Lord Jesus. Uh, I crucify my flesh. I'm sorry for everything I've ever done, every stupid word I've ever said, everything I looked at that was wrong, everywhere my feet have taken me, my hands have touched. Uh, God, God, I ask you to forgive me for everything. Purify my mind and my heart and my spirit and my life. It's all yours, Lord. I'll take away what doesn't need to be there. I'll add what does. i got to live for you. I've got to have you. I've got to have what you're offering. Come on, can you do it? Can you do it? Let your faith out. Let your faith out. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, everybody can't repent two minutes. Everybody can't repent 30 seconds, but you can do it. If your heart means it and if your mind means it and, and you're really willing to give him everything. Come on, if the Lord's working on you to go grab a hold of somebody and pray for him, do it. 
if, 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 if you're all right with the social distance thing. And if you're not, reach out and pray for them where you're at. But we can't just sit there and do nothing. The word has went forth. And the Lord said we got to find where they're standing. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? If your answer to that is no, then I'm going to say, how were you baptized? How far have you got in your walk with God? If you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, that baptistry is ready right now. You repent of your sins and we'll have you baptized in Jesus' name. And the Holy Ghost is promised to you. Spirit. Fire, 
Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet, I felt the Spirit moving all over me. You should, you should have been there when I prayed through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet. say today is the day that they're going to be saying that to somebody. Brother Ronnie, in the future, somebody's going to say, you should have been there, but it's today. It's today. Today's my testimony, Brother Terrence. Today's the day that you should have been there and seen. Because the church was on fire, but the Holy Ghost was too. And the Holy Ghost is in me. Sister Heidi, do you care to throw that verse, 1 Corinthians uh, 15 and 4, I believe it was, back up there? I told Brother Larry when we was over there, I said, the Lord just gave, hit me with something. Right, right before this verse, I think it was in verse 2 or 3, it says he was dead. Then this verse says he was buried. Then he did rise again. The Bible says that Jesus told Moses, I am that I am. You tell them that I am had sent you. I'm going to tell somebody today that he was buried. He was, he did rise again, but he's doing it again. You were dead. You were buried, but you're going to rise again. That's the plan of salvation. I am was, I am is, and I am will be. Now or later. I'm going to rejoice now or later because it's inevitable. It's going to happen. And you, and you know what? I get Brother Larry. Dad's title says now or later. Because rejoicing doesn't stay in the past. It doesn't say then, now, and later. Brother David, you're still rejoicing over what he did yesterday. Now. It's always now. And will be. If he didn't do it now, he will. And I, I came to tell somebody I am had sent me. I am that I am. Because, and if you don't understand that, it's because he's omnipresent. He was, he is, and he will be. He did, he does, and he will do. He heals, and he will heal. I, I just think we ought to give the Lord a little bit of praise. 
Come on, we ain't, we ain't just going to walk out of here like he ain't did something. He done something in somebody's life. There was somebody that got a renewing. Somebody got a stirred up gift. Somebody's dry bones just begin to put flesh back on. You should have been there when I prayed through. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Hey, man, I got one thing to tell the devil. Revival is here. And I think he's starting to know it. I think he's starting to tremble a little bit. Because the name of Jesus has been getting preached about. The name of Jesus has been getting spoke about. There's power in that name. Amen. Everybody can be making your way back to your seats. You know, we talked about truth and elements this morning. There's a lot of relative truths being preached out there. But I got one thing, Brother Larry. I got the absolute truth. The absolute truth. The absolute God. There's no if, ands, or buts. He is, he was, and he will be. Amen. One hour of prayers tomorrow night at 6.30. Church cleaning this week is team number five, Sister Casey and Sister Carly. Always remember the Facebook contest. Anybody that shares our service for each individual service will be put in a drawing for $25. And after March 9th, all of those names will go in a big drawing for $100. So you really want to be sharing that. And uh, we're seeing nothing but blessings coming from that. And those of you that are watching online, take heed to the word. I, I felt, I mentioned it to Brother Larry while we was over there too, but did anybody feel anything a little bit different about this service today? There's just something different shaking up. I told him, I said, the message is the same. But what's different is the ground's been worked up a little bit. What, it, what it's fell on ain't what it's fallen on, before, fallen on before. Some seeds have been falling on good ground today. Amen. Like I said, revival is here. Ladies, opposite night is this Tuesday, January 25th. Uh, see details. Ask Sister Amanda about it. The, the next rally will be February 6th in Kennett. And, and I encourage anybody, if you're hungry in any way, please be there for that rally. Last night, what did he do last year, Brother Larry? Miracles, signs, and wonders. There's something happens when you unify other churches. And it's going to be crowded. It's going to be packed. It's going to be packed with some Jesus. It's going to be starting at 454. February 6th, and the reason it's at 4.54 time is because we pray for a few minutes before the service. Have focused prayer. Brother Chuck Carr is going to be ministering, and uh, he can preach. Brother Larry is going to be preaching for us next Sunday, the 30th. You want to be here for that, too. It's going to be awesome. Amen. Brother Blake is also going to be ministering at Poplar Corner Pentecostal Church in Wildersville, Tennessee, this Saturday, the 29th at 6 p.m. So be in prayer with him for that. Be, be praying and, and fasting for him because God's going to do great things where he goes too. Right. Amen. Amen. Come on, Dad. Dad wasn't, Dad wasn't just uh, speaking to speak when he said that people were going to start going out. And it ain't just us. There's Bible studies that are about to be taught. There's uh, small groups that are about to be formed. There's ministries that are being formed all over this church. And it's all because somebody's hungry. Somebody is saying, I'm, I'm hungry. I, I don't want what I've been getting. I want a little bit more. I may have been baptized this way, but I want more. Amen. Was there any uh, birthdays here today? All right. Sister Ellie. Birthday or anniversary. <clears throat> All right.
right, if they'll stand up, we'll sing happy birthday to them. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus here every day. Everybody go ahead and stand up. Amen. We're about to start having some spiritual birthdays. Hey, I didn't get enough amens on that. We're about to start having some spiritual birthdays. Amen. Some rebirths. Brother Johnny James preaches a message that I've been trying, I want to get a hold of, and I have to look at, talk to dad about it. But he said, when second is better than first. Because the second birth is better than the first, Brother Ronnie. You ain't the same person that you were when you're reborn through Christ. Amen. I'm looking forward to what God's about to do in our church because we're on the brink of a revival. And I know we keep beating that and saying that, but I, I believe we are, Brother Blake. Heaven is meeting us here in this community, and we ain't seen nothing yet. We ain't seen nothing yet. Amen. Brother Blake, why don't you go ahead and just dismiss us in prayer? Lord, we love you. God, we thank you for your spirit. Lord, we thank you for your voice, Lord, that speaks to us, that guides us every step. Everything that we do, Lord, I just ask that you go with us, Lord. Be with us in our homes. Be with us in our jobs. Lord, I just, I love you, and I thank you for what you're doing. I know you have more for us, and I pray that we can get that engraved into our minds and our hearts that you have more for us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. In the name of Jesus. Greet you a visitor. Let them know that we were better because they were here. And go in Jesus' name. <laughs>